NLG Tech Task Force webinar series. Um, we'll get started now as um, a number of you have already joined us. A couple of housekeeping um, recommendations um, as you get started with this webinar. First, we'd love to keep this interactive, so do post your questions in the WebEx chat window and we'll get to them during the Q&A session or in a follow-up. Um, you can also expect to receive a follow-up email that will include the recording of this webinar and any of the slides and information shared on the webinar, and you're welcome to share that broadly uh, within your organizations and with your partners. And do note that there will be a webinar satisfaction poll that um, will launch as soon as you uh, close the WebEx window, and we really appreciate you taking a minute to provide feedback on, on this webinar. So um, welcome to actually the first webinar of the NLG Tech Task Force for this uh, year, for 2018, and uh, thrilled to uh, feature a fantastic program that's called Skype in the Classroom. And more about that in a minute. Um, I do want to uh, take a couple of minutes to give you an update on the NLG Tech Task Force, and also for those of you who are new to the task force, um, uh, share I think about task force, so hopefully you'll join us in in the future. Um, so those of, for those of you who are new, the task force was launched um, in March of 2017 by NetHope and the No Loss Generation Initiative to um, specifically connect the experts in humanitarian response. Uh, so global NGOs, local NGOs, uh, with the private sector expertise and resources, including technology, and all with the goal to address the needs of displaced children and youth. And in the first nine months, uh, we've seen over 50 different organizations join the task force. You're seeing some of the, the logos on the slide, including Again, global and local NGOs, private sector companies, academic institutions, and also social entrepreneurs. We've hosted 10 webinars like this one, where we share programs and solutions, and also held one private sector symposium um, here in, in Silicon Valley. And in 2018, we will continue to grow uh, the task force community and facilitate cross-sector sharing, again, like this webinar. Um, you will also see more of the cross-sector collaborations or specific projects. We have four projects that we're working on right now that were launched um, at the Silicon Valley Symposium a few months ago. Um, and while the task force supports all three pillars of the No Lost Generation Initiative uh, that include education, protection, and youth and adolescents, we'll continue to emphasize and focus on the third pillar of NLG, and that is specific to youth and adolescents, including um, their needs related to education, livelihoods or employment, and uh, participation. What I also thought it would be helpful for you to see is our six-month calendar. Um, of course, this is a little bit of an eye chart, but do, uh, uh, do keep in mind that we'll be sharing these slides with you. Um, so you can see uh, what we have planned for you for the next few months. Um, so there will be new webinars, new monthly webinars. Our next webinar is planned for February 8th with the Norwegian Refugee Council and the Arizona State University. Um, you can register on the NLG Tech Task Force website. Uh, we do have a couple of events that I will be talking about in a minute, and then you can always go to the NLG Tech Task Force webinar, uh, website to access any of the resources that we've already shared, uh, webinars, um, one-pagers, so there's a whole set of um, information that might be useful to you um, in your work. Um, just wanted to remind everybody that we have our uh, annual tech summit coming up in Amman. Um, uh, planned for February 21st and February 22nd. It's sponsored by Microsoft, World Vision, and NetHope. There is still time uh, to join us, to but do register uh, to attend or to let us know if you'd like to speak, if you'd like to share any of your programs and solutions. You can also 
register to exhibit, or you can join us as a sponsor. And as a reminder, uh, the focus of this um, annual summit um, is the third pillar of, of the No Loss Generation Initiative, it's youth and adolescents, and specifically the four challenges, therefore opportunities to, uh, to support their needs um, specific to education, employment, participation, and protection. Um, so just a couple of um, kind of final notes in, in terms of the NLG Tech Task Force, how you can get involved. Um, many of you have um, seen the year-end update that we sent out in, in December. Um, just recapping uh, all of the resources and opportunities that are available to you. We also shared uh, a survey as your feedback is incredibly important to our ongoing work and we hope you'll take um, really a minute to provide uh, your feedback but also ideas for 2018 and we'll be sharing these links. Um, and then you can sign up for the task force to receive future communications um, and invitations to webinars like this one and uh, review recordings of the, of the past webinars. So what I'll do right now is just share these links in the chat window so you can access them now. Now, um, I'm just thrilled to um, kick off our today's webinar featuring Skype in the Classroom. Um, it's, a, it's a free global program that helps connect educators with learning resources from around the world, including expert guest speakers, uh, virtual field trips, and, and also classroom collaborations. In essence, um, really this program along with its community of global educators, and we'll hear from some of them, uh, and a portfolio of resources can, can help address some of the needs of displaced children and youth, including education, for example, developing 21st century skills, as well as participation. So now it's, it's my pleasure to introduce today's feature speakers. Um, I'm thrilled to have Skype team, um, Ross and Iro, uh, who will tell you um, about the program and also excited that we'll have the opportunity to hear directly from the educators, uh, Rania and Sohair from Egypt and Emma from Sweden. So now I will um, invite Ross um, to share with us um, an uh, overview of Skype for Good work. Thank you, Leila, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are, and uh, really honored to be here. Um, and I'll just walk through briefly the agenda here, and then a little bit of an overview of uh, Skype for Good, and then specifically Skype in the classroom. Um, so we're really excited to to uh, to be able to participate here today. Um, and as you see here in the agenda, uh, we'll talk about some of the um, some of the different roles that our technology can play in education um, and why these are important. Uh, and then Eero will walk through sort of what is Skype in the classroom and some learning outcomes we'll hear from the educators. Uh, and then really how to get started. Um, again, as, as Layla mentioned, this is a free program uh, with a number of resources around the world. Um, and we really encourage you to take a test drive and check it out and, um, and you know, get, let us know how how we can help. Uh, so with that, I'll run through, um, I guess my name, Ross Smith, I'm the director of Skype for Good. And just to give a little bit of an overview of the Skype for Good program, it's a relatively new team. Um, Skype in the Classroom has been around for quite a while, but uh, the Skype for Good team has come together in the last six or eight months. And we're really, uh, really about how we can support, we sit in the engineering org in, in Skype, and how we can support people who are using Skype to, to do good in the world, um, whether that's education that we'll hear about today, uh, humanitarian causes, health and telemedicine, uh, disaster relief, and, and really uh, thinking about how, uh, how we can make Skype more useful in a lot of these things. And so today we'll focus on education and the Skype in the Classroom program. And before I hand it over to Ira, I wanted to um, just go through a, a, a few of the numbers. We, um, we did a survey um, of uh, 500 teachers and 250 parents uh, a few months back. And just to ask them about um, 
sort of 21st century skills and empathy and kindness and how can Skype in the classroom help. And 95% um, and of the teachers and 89% of the parents felt that Skype in the classroom was a great way to learn uh, STEM skills, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, and to branch, sort of open the walls of the classroom and branch out geographically. Um, and then the face-to-face the face -to -face communication uh, in terms of teaching empathy, um, being able to bring guest speakers into the classroom through Skype or to take the kids out of the classroom on a virtual field trip, um, that this was a great way to learn empathy and, you know, lots of great stories of, of students and educators connecting around the world. Um, and just sort of building this global, global citizens, building these future skills, uh, and using technology, leveraging Skype to, uh, to make the world a smaller and a better place. And so with that, um, thank you all again for joining us today. And uh, really honored to be here. And I will, uh, I will hand it over to Eero to go through more of the details of Skype in the Classroom. So thank you. Hello, everyone. So my name is uh, Eero Sipopoulou. And uh, for the last two years, I work with the Skype in the Classroom team. I'm a former educator, though, and with a true passion for Skype in the Classroom. Um, so um, let's start. Um, let, let's start with like what Skype in the classroom is first, and then uh, yeah, I will be talking about why you should be using it in the classroom, and then uh, who can use it, and of course I'm going to do a quick demo of how you can go and uh, request some of uh, these uh, um, amazing experiences from our community. So Skype in the Classroom is part of the Max Educator community. And uh, through the Max Educator community, we are reaching 2 million teachers around the world with everything from lesson plans and training to classroom to classroom connections, guest speakers, and virtual field trips over Skype. Uh, there are no costs involved for teachers uh, or partners. Um, we, are, we are just an educational program that aims to remove uh, any geographic and economic boundaries to education uh, with the use of a technology in, in a classroom. Um, Skype in the Classroom lessons are live learning experiences and they are all scheduled in advance between one or more classes and uh, a virtual field trip or a guest speaker host. So. Um, and, and that is basically what our program is. We have a different, we have a few different type of activities. Uh, and uh, for example, we have like the virtual field trips, and this is the demo of our community. So virtual field trips, we have people who are out in the field and uh, like in museums, in aquariums, in zoos, and they can take you into a walking tour in that place. So uh, kids can uh, can uh, can experience how a museum is from wherever they are in the world, and they can visit different museums, like in Egypt or in uh, in the U.S. or here in the U.K. So we have partners literally all around the world, and we're continuing to grow in our partnerships uh, every day. So we have the virtual field trips. We have Skype lessons. So Skype lessons are uh, like experiences where you can. Uh, just go invite experts in your classroom, like authors, for example, or a marine biologist or uh, an explorer. They can come into your classroom and they can teach uh, something around their expertise um, and um, their expertise. Then we have uh, in our community, you will be able to find, you will be able also to connect a classroom with um, other classrooms around the world. Um, to either have a simple cultural connection and talk about uh, different hab your habits, about find out what uh, similarities and differences you have with another culture, um, or you can. Uh, the other thing that you can do is collaborate, um, uh, participate in the Skype collaboration. So Skype collaboration are projects created by educators. Uh, where they are asking uh, and other classrooms to collaborate on a, on, a, on a subject or in a project with them. So, for example, now we have a lot of um, projects. Uh, we run a campaign around literacy and the importance of reading and writing. So we are getting a lot of um, projects from educators where they are asking to connect with other classrooms to read aloud uh, books to each other. Um, so this is another example that you can find in the community. And finally, uh, we, you can find partners in other classrooms uh, to play Mystery Skype. So Mystery Skype is a game created by educators 
Um, so it's a, a critical guessing game. One classroom can ask uh, is asking questions to the other, uh, and they're trying to find where the other is located in the world with uh, yes or no questions, which is great. And um, yeah, and that's all the activities that you can find in the class in in our community. Uh, so moving on, I want to briefly uh, talk about um, the learning outcomes uh, that we have seen. Uh, me as an educator, and you'll hear from the other educators too, uh, we've seen uh, coming into the students from like participating in these activities. So first of all, Skype the classroom activities can build classroom, they build a classroom community. They can teach empathy, like through, by participating in our activities, you teach your kids empathy for others because they meet others, they connect with other kids, and they, they, they find that we, are, we have no difference, and we're all the same. Um, it also cultivates collaboration skills, of course, and um, speaking and listening skills. Um, it uh, involves real-world scenarios in many occasions, especially uh, like in the, uh, our virtual field trips or like uh, the collaboration projects that they, you can participate with uh, your students. Um, it, it literally creates problem solvers and it uh, sparks creativity and curiosity to kids. Um, and of course, it can take students to places that they may they may never may, they may have never go. And um, it it makes the day fun for them. So it's truly uh, engaging and fun activities um, for uh, for all uh, the kids. Uh, so yes. So now, if you're wondering uh, who can participate in those activities, um, so we have, of course, a lot of um, educators uh, who are participating in the activities, and of course, we have uh, a lot of partners who are on the activities. But um, and this is like a, a type of formal education. But of course, we have a lot of homeschoolers, for example, in the U.S. who are participating in our activities. So if you are an NGO worker with uh, education background, then you are more than welcome to join our community and, uh, of course, uh, register and request an activity uh, for, for, for the display skills that you are responsible for. Uh, I'm sure that all our partners will be more than welcome to support your work and, uh, of course, educate and help uh, your work with, um, with uh, the refugee. The refugee. Um, so uh, I think I'll hand over now to uh, the educators. And before I do this, um, I would like to let you know that I'll come back again later and I'll run a demo on uh, how you can uh, register for an activity, who you can register in the Max Educator community, and request an activity, uh, and of course, what are the technical requirements that are needed in order to participate. Uh, so uh, I'll hand it now to Zohir, here, and you'll hear back from me in a while. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eo. Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be among you today, uh, sharing uh, for my favorite program, Skype in the Classroom. My name is uh, Suhir Zaki Abdel Fattah, and I am a science teacher in Victory College in Alexandria, Egypt. I teach seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. I am also a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert and Skype Master Teacher. Also, I am an ambassador for uh, the Teach Sustainable Development Goals Movement. Uh, once more, thank you for inviting me today to share my story and experience with Skype in the classroom and how it has inspired my students and enhanced their understanding of the world. As an educator, uh, I feel that my continuous professional development is especially important as it can help me become a better teacher. I discovered Skype in the classroom after completing a professional development course on the Microsoft Educator community. I immediately realized that this tool would um, be really powerful for my classroom. I wanted to try it as soon as possible and I decided to participate in Skype as own event in 2016. Uh, I arranged our first school with a school in England. Although we had some internet signal issues, it was an amazing cultural connection, and my students were excited to learn about a different culture 
and the daily habits of students in England. I realized that Skype can break down classroom walls and allow my students to collaborate with peers from around the world. With uh, my students' newfound love for connections with classrooms around the world, I knew we were going to have an exciting year of experiences with the Skype in the classroom. I continued looking for connections through the Microsoft Educator community because I wanted to give my students the opportunity to connect and learn from their peers in other countries and compare experiences. We connected with classrooms from different places around the world and each of our wonderful learning experience have shown me the potential and power of Skype in the classroom and encouraged me to start exploring more of the amazing world of Skype. We started not only collaborating with other classrooms almost daily to learn about different cultures and their daily habits, but inviting experts to share their knowledge and expertise with us. And participating in global projects was one of the great benefits of the Skype in classroom. And since we cannot often participate in learning activities outside the classroom, we started using Skype virtual field trips to travel to different places around the world without leaving our classroom. Skype removes the walls of your classroom, allowing your students to connect with the world and become global citizens. However, I must admit that there were some challenges while I was trying to introduce and implement this amazing tool in my school. But having seen its power, nothing could stop me. First, I had to overcome some technical difficulties. I remember myself going back and forth with our school's IT administrator in order to make sure that the connection in my classroom would work okay. Although it took us a few weeks, we managed to get the right setup. In the meantime, I had to persuade my principal about its value. And to be honest, this was not proven as difficult as I thought. Once we figured the connectivity in my class, I decided to invite him and a few colleagues of mine in the classroom during one of our connections. And they immediately realized its power in students' learning. My principal was the one who also encouraged me to run training sessions for the school staff in order for them to learn how to use Skype in their classrooms. Skype in classroom gave me the opportunity to create many Skype lessons to talk about Egyptian civilization, history, and traditions. Not only that, but as an ambassador to teach sustainable development goals, I created my own project impact of quality education on sustainable development goals in the form of a Skype collaboration lesson that allowed my students to exchange ideas and thoughts and build up their minds to achieve the global goals. Put aside your fears of not connecting curriculum. Every school can be connected to the lesson you are teaching or extend knowledge for students. Like every adventure, they might be some challenges, but don't give up. A question that I often get from my colleagues is, what happens when a call might be dropped due to weak internet signal? If it happens, call back. And if it doesn't work, then as educators, we have probably planned ahead very well. And we can use some uh, materials to carry on till the connection returns. I truly believe that all the Skype activities encourage curiosity, enhance motivation, and cultivate an enthusiasm for research. And I would like to invite every educator and people who are involved in education to introduce students to the wonders of the Skype in the classroom. Either you invite guest speakers, schedule a Skype lesson, or register for a virtual field trip. Each activity will inspire your students to achieve more. It's a really simple. Get some good internet connection, a laptop, a camera, and ideally a projector. Then sign up to the Microsoft Educator community and explore the wealth of opportunities. 
just waiting for you and your students to explore. That's all from me. Thank you again for inviting me to share my experience with you. Ira, would you like to introduce the next speaker? Yes. So Rania uh, Ezad Mohammed is our Skype master teacher from Egypt. So Rania, if you're ready, we'd love to hear um, for your learning uh, experiences and how Skype in the classroom, how you're using Skype in the classroom, in your classroom. Uh, thanks, Iro. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me for this great honor for sharing my experience in uh, Skype in the classroom. Uh, first of all, my name is Rani Aizat Mohammed Said. I, I am an English teacher, MIE expert, Skype master teacher. Uh, also, I am ambassador for teaching sustainable development goals in El Kafrawi official language school. Besides, also, I am a participant in Kakoma project for, of Coin Timers for teaching re students uh, refugee in Kenya. Uh, by the way, I, I, I am uh, teaching uh, students from elementary and uh, intermediate levels in Bamiata City. Um, I started uh, uh, joining uh, Skype in the classroom in 2016. And I and my students joined Mr. Skype activity as first step for all of us. And Mr. Skype activity, as Ero described before, is uh, a global guessing game where students try to guess each other's location through asking yes or no questions. Uh, I still remember the reactions of my students from that moment. Uh, they can't believe themselves that they could connect and communicate other students from another country. The world is in our classroom. Fantastic. They were so excited and happy. Uh, from that moment, I realized that Skype in the classroom would be life-changing for my students and me as a teacher. So I started exploring different activities on Skype in the classroom website as guest speakers, Skype lessons, virtual field trips to different places around the world, and also global uh, collaborations uh, from other countries. From uh, through uh, the, our calls, we began sharing ancient and modern Egypt, costumes, food, uh, and also how we celebrate Christmas in Egypt. And also, we uh, visited uh, and uh, my students learned uh, many new things, such as sign language. As you see here on the slide, we have here a girl wearing blue dress. This girl is a student with special needs. I'd like to say that they are very wonderful and brilliant. They taught my students sign language is for some words, and this connection and this unique experience have conveyed empathy, love, passion towards each other. Uh, after that, we began, I began to uh, participate in global projects. Why? Because to create a global uh, environment for my students. And because also I, I am an ambassador for United Nations, I try to get my students uh, into action for and involvement into a, a new and better world of 2030. Through our collaborations, my students learned how to take actions towards a clean water, how to achieve life on land, how to end poverty, zero hunger, and, and climate action through a global a project of an amazing Skype master teacher, Koyan Timmers, and also through our Skype collaborations that are created before about desertification to achieve sustainable environment. All what I mentioned regarding these global projects are available on Skype, uh, on Microsoft Educator community, and you can join it and register for them. After that, 
I uh, and my students will begin uh, visiting virtually different places, museums, historical places, zoos, and also historical museums in Egypt. This is uh, through an, uh, an outstanding collaboration between Skype in the Classroom community and the Ministry of Antiquities to achieve the project titled Hashtag My Museum in Your Classroom in Egypt and around the world. I'd like to say that uh, that this connection and these virtual visits to museums in Egypt and around the world had a great impact on my students. Why? Because they could connect, communicate, and find the answers to their questions, answers that they may not find in their or in their a lot of uh, history books. Uh, I'd like to say that Skype in the classroom has opened the door of a new world for learning of my students. I am so proud of them because they are now can they, they have become global citizens. They, they become aware of a lot of facts and uh, problems regarding other communities and countries and how they become fluent in English through communication and listening skills through Skype. Uh, I'd like to say that not only that for uh, uh, students, but also for other educators. I also have organized several online trainings, not only for educators in Egypt, but for educators around the world. And I can say that they all fall in love with Skype in the classroom and its possibilities. I'd like to say that all and most of Egyptian educators, they joined this year Skype and they were very wonderful and presented a lot of activities which are amazing. I am more than happy to connect with you. If you have questions on how to implement Skype in the classroom in your teaching, my advice to you, go to Microsoft Educator Community, register, and start exploring amazing Skype in the classroom today. I'd like to say that the possibilities are endless with the power of technology, especially for the 21st century learners of today. I totally recommend the Skype in the classroom activities for every classroom around the world, not only for students, but also for uh, us as teachers and educators. Thank you so much, and I'd like to say and give shout out with the Skype in the classroom, together we are stronger. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rania, and also thank you, Sohera, before. Um, Ira, I think we now we have uh, um, Emma Nass from Sweden. We have Emma. Emma is one of our Skype Master Teachers from Sweden, and she's going to share her experience with the Kakuma refugee camp and how it has impacted her as an educator and also uh, the impact it had on her students when they connected with the refugee camp. Uh, Emma, over to you. Hello, everyone, wherever in the world you are. Uh, my name is Emma. I'm a teacher from Sweden. Uh, I teach in a very small school in a very small village on the countryside of Sweden called Jönslund. Uh, I teach very locally, uh, but I always say that I have the whole world as my classroom. Uh, my students are 10 and 11 years old, and I teach English, but I also teach other subjects such as social studies, etc., uh, etc. Et um, I have used Skype in my classroom for over five years. Uh, I am a Skype master teacher. Uh, I'm an SDG ambassador. Uh, I'm a Microsoft fellow, but I'm also here today to talk as an ambassador for Project Kakuma. I believe strongly that every child deserves an education, and I am super interested in 
how we in the 21st century can move the world of the classrooms. What can happen with education if we think globally? So what about Project Kakuma? What is that? Well, uh, Project Kakuma is a refugee camp in Kenya. It's one of the biggest. And in 2015, some very passionate educators that have a love for uh, education and technology uh, got together uh, and created a project called Project Kakuma. So 100 educators from 40 countries uh, got together and decided to teach the refugees together. Because in these camps, uh, there are not 20 students in each classroom. There are like 150, 200 students in each classroom. And we believe that we need to help each other to teach students, even though you're in a refugee camp. So, uh, Project Kakuma uh, has um, its own consultant where they can train teachers. Uh, so, one consultant trained the other teachers. And we now have 20 donated laptops. We have our own infrastructure with solar panels. And we, of course, it's sustainable. So what happens is that these over 100 educators offer lessons to these kids in Kakuma. For example, science, math, geography, social science, even art. And this way, we help these teachers to offer a education to students that wouldn't have the possibility otherwise. Uh, sometimes when you think about this, you only see the benefit of, of the students in Kakuma. But what happens is when you connect, uh, when I connect with my students, uh, my students also benefit a lot. We fight against misinformation, we fight against polarization. And through helping out, teaching, we also get so much, much back. Because for us, it's like we learn together. Uh, so the kids in Kakuma get a lesson, for example, about geography in Europe. And we get a lesson from them that we uh, further on can, can instill in ourselves and in our education system. So empathy is, is a part of what my students uh, bring back to their community. So how does it work to get this going in Kakuma? Well, basically, all we need is <laughs> A computer, right? We need internet connection. And we need to be humble and say that sometimes connection can be bad. Uh, sometimes it uh, can be problems to get connected. But as the other guest speaker said, there's always a way. There's always a plan B. Call again, wait. Uh, and we try to offer. Uh, at least Skype lessons every week to the kids of Kakuma. And it has been challenges, uh, but as I say, there's always a way. Uh, and right now we are very um, happy that we are getting back on track and uh, we'll start teaching uh, on a regular basis again. I will come back a little bit to uh, how we can educate also the teachers 
within Kakuma. So they themselves can get more professional with the Skype. So they can use this technology and open up their classrooms to the world. Uh, this is a way to learn from each other. So we always say, what, what's better to, uh, than to learn from each other? So Project Kakuma is from the beginning a, uh, an idea on how we can uh, transform education. How can we help? I have 28 students in my classroom. And by opening up the wall, of the classroom and teach them about the world, to take them out on adventures, to meet the students of Kakuma, uh, to let them learn together with the world. Uh, I hope that I also teach them some values that you can't get from a textbook. Uh, they learn how to introduce themselves. They learn empathy. They see that the things that they read in the newspapers behind the facts, behind the, the numbers and the letters, there are people. And uh, the students are in Kakuma are just like us. And as far as what age group there is, in Kakuma you have both uh, primary and secondary schools. So you see you have a wide range of, of age groups. We try to consider that when we have uh, guest speakers or other educators uh, coming in. Uh, and we try to match as, as good as we can. Um, but I would say that uh, being a teacher, uh, working together with Project Kakuma is, is a life-changing experience for both the educators as well as uh, the students, uh, but it's, it's no extra work. It's just uh, extra pleasure to to be able to do something for the world with what I can do as an educator. But this is this is my gift to give back. But I cannot stress uh, enough that it's not me giving. It's also a lot of uh, receiving. Uh, so. Uh, that was all from Project Kakuma. I think you might have a question, so we'll take that afterwards. So thank you all for, for listening, and uh, a hello from Sweden. Thank you very much, Emma. And uh, OK, so um, as I promised, I'll now uh, give a small demo on how you can get started with Skype in the classroom. And of course, uh, what are the technical requirements? Um, so let's see first the technical requirements. I think that Shahir and Rania mentioned some of them um, while they were uh, talking about their students' experiences. But uh, what you really need uh, in order to connect uh, display students and your classrooms with um, classrooms around the world and with experts is a device with internet connection, um, a webcam, it can be external or internal, ideally a projector, um, because it, it can make the experience uh, much better when there's a projector and they can, uh, they, your students uh, can see uh, the kids or the guest speaker in the big screen. And of course, you need a Skype account, which is uh, completely free. Uh, now, before I move uh, on to my next slide, I'd like to, uh, where I do have some uh, tips and tricks for you, um, I'd like to share my, um, I'd like to share my screen and give a quick demo of how you can join the Mars Educator community, how you can um, find all the Skype in the classroom experiences. Um, so sharing my screen. Okay, so this is the educator community. All you need to do is go and search for education.microsoft.com and it will take you to our homepage. Uh, so from our homepage, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, we are running a literacy campaign this month. So feel free to join us and invite an author to your classroom or join a, a project uh, organized by teachers. So how you can join the community? So um, 
on your right hand, you'll see this uh, Join Now button. So all you need to do is click on the Join Now button. There's a pop-up window, and then from there, you choose uh, the way you want to authenticate yourself. It can be Office 65, um, Microsoft, Skype, Facebook, or Twitter. Make sure you always do the same way when you're coming back and signing in the community. Uh, so I'll use, I have, I, I'll sign in the community directly, but this is how you can join it. Um, so, and this is the, 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 the main page, the home page. So on your, um, on your uh, left hand, you'll see this menu where it's blue, it's Skype. So you can navigate in all the Skype pages by just clicking here. And you can see we have our overview page here. Uh, again, all the exciting ways you can be the world education that I described before, me and the educators, like the virtual field trips, Skype lessons, Skype collaborations, Mr. Skype. Um, and then what I would recommend you to do, um, of course, you can come and explore uh, all our pages, and I'm sure that you will find there's a wealth of uh, experiences and activities for you and your uh, classrooms. But what I would recommend you to do as a first step is once you join the community, um, to uh, directly go to our getting start getting started page. So we have designed a getting started page uh, where it takes you step by step in all for all the things that you need uh, to do, uh, and it gives you a good overview on how to get started with Skype in the classroom. So step number one, you again, I, I'm repeating myself, but you need to register in the Marxist Education community. And once you register and come up here, you'll see what that you have. We have some instructions and a really nice way here uh, that it helps you. It gives you instructions on how you complete your profile. So basically, you need to show down here and read the information here. This will help you and give you all the necessary information to to complete your profile. Um, it's uh, in order to participate in the Skype activities while completing your profile. There is a Skype in the classroom section. So. Uh, so please make sure that you go and uh, and complete uh, all the information in the Skype in the class section, uh, and also don't forget to add, of course, your bio and your picture. Uh, so once you do that, uh, next step that I totally recommend you is to take our professional uh, development introduction course, uh, introduction Skype in the classroom. So if if you click here, you can view the course, you can read the different units, you can learn. Uh, you can learn about all the different activities. Um, there are some educators and some videos that you can watch. So that will give you a really good uh, brief introduction into a really deep introduction into Skype in the classroom. Um, the course is worth 500 points. So every course that you're taking, every activity that you are uh, completing, is uh, you can gather activities, you can gather points, and um, you can become a Microsoft Innovative Educator with 1,000 points in the community, which is one of the um, benefits being part of uh, Microsoft Educator community. Then the next thing you need to do is just find an activity um, and go and request, uh, request it. And it's really simple. I'm going to show you how you do it. There is also a video here that it shows you step by step how you can do it. Um, there are also extra information and support that you can explore. Uh, we have a, a lot of uh, Skype Master teachers, including uh, some of the ones that are here with us today, um, that are providing live how-to uh, sessions. So you can invite them, and they can. Uh, take you step by step on what they were doing in their classroom. We have a calendar of events with all the different activities. As I said, um, we have a um, literacy campaign at the moment, so a lot of activities and a lot of guest speakers around literacy. We have Earth Day coming in April. Uh, we have we, ha we had Skype as an earlier in November that um, uh, some of the educators mentioned. And there's also a teacher's guide that you could advise and uh, get information on how you can uh, work on the experience, what you can do before, during, and after the call to expand the experience, and and um, and and then uh, expand on the experience and uh, get into more activities with your students. Uh, and yeah, let me now go back, uh, maybe into one of our virtual field trips uh, to show you how you can um, you can request an activity. Uh, so really quickly, uh, let me find one. 
So, yeah, we do have a lot of activities that are in English, but then we are also working with um, different partners in different uh, uh, places around the world who are offering uh, their virtual field trips in their native language. So this is an example in the National Museum of Digital Civilization in Cairo, and uh, you will see that the lesson is provided both in English and Arabic, um, and then depends depends on the native language of, of the, uh, the speaker and if they can provide it in their language. We are onboarding all the time new people and new experiences. Uh, we have a lot of museums in um, in Egypt at the moment. We have. Uh, three virtual field trips in India. So we are trying, we have a museum in Russia. So we are bringing, um, every day, we are trying to bring new experiences into the community and more are coming soon. So how you can request the activity. So basically, uh, you can see a description of what the activity is going to include. Um, you can see like the student ages, the category, um, and of course you can see some, you can hear some uh, pictures and of course there are always resources provided by our partners uh, and you can use them with your students before the um, activity uh, just to prepare them. So what you need to do is click on this uh, purple button. Uh, sorry, I need to sign in really quickly. While you're signing in, there was a quick question, Eero, since we're going to run out of time, about languages. There was a question about availability of the content in um, different languages. So you mentioned Arabic. Is there French? Or what are some of the other languages, if you can say more about that? So there are, yeah, there are a lot of countries who have uh, localized the, the site, like the, the, the Max Educator community. So I think that if you are in France, you can see it in French. If you are uh, in Italy, they, I think they're working, for example, now to localize some part of the site. The Skype with the Classroom experiences are mainly uh, provided in English, um, but uh, again, if we have partners who can operate in both languages, uh, depending on the country they are in, they, 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 it varies. They can operate. So at the moment, we have a lot of partnerships with uh, the museums in, uh, in um, Egypt, so a lot of them are offered in Arabic. Uh, we have um, a partnership in Greece, uh, so they might be able to offer, for example, in Greek. Depends on the country and depends on the experiences. Again, we are onboarding more partners uh, every day, so um, and we are trying as much as we can to bring global partners so as to offer it in both languages. So how to request the activity? You just click on the purple button, as I said before, and there is a pop-up window here, and what you need to do is click on the day, uh, that the virtual field trip is uh, the day that is available, and then you just choose the time. You write your message here. Say, "Hey, I'd like, hi, Abdulrahman, I'd like to have this lesson in Arabic. Uh, I have a classroom with 20 students. Uh, we are from um, Cairo in Egypt, and we'd love to visit the museum." You can send that, and then you just click request a session, and then the host will reply to you. We say within three working days, but sometimes it might take longer for some of them since they're getting a lot of requests. So if you don't hear back for like, um, like even like five, seven working days, uh, don't get worried. They're probably uh, really busy uh, getting a lot of requests from teachers like yourself. Um, and this is um, the whole process of stop sharing, and I'll continue really quickly with. Uh, my tips. So yes, go join the Max Educator community as I showed you. Visit the Skype in the Classroom Get Started page and get started by requesting an activity. Um, really quickly, uh, my tips here. Before you get started, um, make sure that wherever you are in the world, you have a good internet connection. Um, and try to do a test call before your first call with um, another classroom or one of our partners. Um, then. Um, I would advise you teach to your students uh, and review the Skype etiquette. And when I mean Skype etiquette, I mean you need to teach them how to be good listeners, how this experience is going to teach them to be good listeners, how to take turns, how to speak loudly and clearly when they're speaking to um, to other kids in the other uh, um, in the other part in another part of the world, uh, how to always put their hands up for questions. So all these are like what we're calling the Skype etiquette, and they. If you visit uh, the Get Started page, you can find there uh, resources and information about all these um, 
all these things. And then what we advise is always be interactive, you and your kids. Encourage your students to be interactive, ask questions, and um, uh, get them engaged as much as you can. And of course, always try to expand the experience. So um, yeah, so Skype in the classroom activity is something that you can bring and tie it with a piece of your curriculum, but you can also, and you can do a lot of activities like research before and after to expand the experience. Uh, always check the Skype calendar of events and uh, follow the Skype of the Classroom on social um, where uh, you can find updates on uh, our new experiences and tips and tricks. Uh, reach out to us if you have any questions and yeah, don't hesitate, just dive in. So that was all from us. Uh, so Leila, over Great. to you. Great. Thank you, Iro. Thank you, Emma, Rania, Sohair, and, and Ross um, for this fantastic overview of Skype in the Classroom and actually special thanks to our educators for really bringing it to life for us. Um, I hope um, all of you attending and then also listening to the recording of this webinar uh, were able to really learn more about how Skype in a Classroom program can help students and communities, including refugees, acquire new skills and also engage in a very positive cross-cultural exchange. Um, we have time for a couple of questions. Um, I have here um, the, the slide that includes all of our emails. If there are any follow-up questions, and you will be receiving recording and the emails in the follow-up email. Um, so the first question is actually related to uh, internet connectivity. And Ross, I think this question is probably uh, for you all up Skype and, and also for ERA. Um, accessing um, the internet is still a challenge in places like Africa. Um, so there's a question around Skype potentially having a solution for that. Yes, thank you. Yes, it's a, it's a um, you know it's it's definitely a um, focus area for Skype all up for the product. Uh, we have released a Skype Lite, which is a low bandwidth version in India. Uh, if you're interested in a in a beta version, uh, and this is for Android only, um, but there is a beta version if you're not in India, uh, and we continue to to look at that and move forward with uh, with both um, Android versions and as well as looking all up. Uh, we know a lot of the classrooms connect using the desktop version, so we are doing some exploration there. Nothing really to announce yet, but um, but it is top of mind for us, and we're very aware of the requirements and the and the and the desire and the need for a solution here. Great, thanks, Ross. I've included a, a link in the chat window. Uh, moving on to the next question, and uh, this question came in different forms from a number of attendees who are interested in becoming guest speakers or who know other experts who could be guest speakers. So, if you, um, Ira, could comment on how can somebody become a guest speaker. Absolutely. So while you are in the Marks Educator community and in the Skype with the Classroom section, there is uh, uh, in, in the, on their left hand uh, in the uh, menu, there is an in the Skype with the Classroom section, it says somewhere share your Skype expertise. So if you go there, it has all the information on how someone can apply to become guest speaker. And of course, if you know a scientist, if you know someone who's working in a museum, in an animal sanctuary, if you know an author, you we are more we would love to uh, get an introduction to them and just yeah just bring them into the community, ask them to join us and uh, continue uh, global learning for hundreds and thousands of kids around the world. Wonderful, thanks, Yero. There's a question about actually relevancy of this program and or how this program could be used. So Skype in the classroom in tertiary education, and I think this also very much the case for uh, displaced um, youth and children that might not be in the formal classrooms. So if you could um, speak to that. Carol, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yes. So it can be absolutely uh, used in tertiary uh, um, education. We do have a lot of uh, guest speakers who uh, could inspire and uh, teach a lot of different uh, things to uh, kids and STEM education, uh, STEM speakers, computer scientists, so they can literally inspire and give a, um, 
uh, a view of how it is to work um, to work in like lots of different professions. We have a whole career dedicated to career. We have a lot. Uh, we have a whole page dedicated to career, so they can find a lot of uh, professionals in there and invite them. And then in terms of um, in terms of uh, like displaced uh, uh, students and formal in, uh, and formal education, I. I'm 100% I'm sure that uh, all our partners will be more than happy to uh, teach displaced students and offer their uh, experiences in virtual field trips, lessons to displaced students. So even if it's not a former, former classroom, if it's not a school, uh, but uh, they're uh, displaced kids in a refugee camp, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you're an NGO with education background, you're more than welcome to come create a profile as an educator in the community and uh, invite um, all the guest the, all the, our guest speakers uh, to uh, yeah to to teach those kids um, their based on their expertise. So yeah, that's for me. Yeah, and just to oh. thank you, and just just to add, I mean, if you're if if there is for the tertiary education, um, you know, if there's an instructor or a contact that's got a group of folks interested in a you know, on a field trip or a guest speaker, um, that you can just register on the site and go ahead and reach out and, and set things up. So really we uh, we want to try and accommodate everything we can. Yeah, so that also means like if you're if you're working for an NGO, a global NGO or a local NGO and offering training um, in your labs, um, you actually can register. Uh, there's um, as as the team noted, you don't have to be part of a formal education system or part of a school. Um, this is really about connecting learning communities um, and experts around the world. I know we're we're out of time, and there are a number of additional questions. Um, what I'd like to ask you is to follow up with this with the speakers with any additional questions that. Um, that you have. It was also great to have a number of teachers, so Skype in the Classroom teachers join us from all around the world and also sharing their experiences um, in, in the chat. Thank you. Um, and again, thank you to our um, speakers, to um, our three educators, so here, Rania and Emma, and to the Skype team, Ira and Ross, for for sharing their work uh, with the task force community. So looking forward to reconnecting with all of you again um, on February 8th for our next webinar with the Norwegian Refugee Council and the Arizona State University. Thanks again. Thanks, Leila. Thanks for having us, and thanks to NLG, and thank you for everyone for tuning in. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you, yes. everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Leila. Bye. Thank you, Il. Thank you, Ross. Thank, Thank you. you. Everyone, bye. Okay. We'll leave this slide up in case um, anyone wants to um, uh, take down some of the contact information, and we will be sharing.